ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣಾಲಯಂಕರುಣಾಲಯಂಕರುಣಾಲಯಂಕರುಣಾಚಾರ್ಯಂಕರಂಕರಾಚ
to them. That means here, Mahabharata comes under Itihasa. Mahabharata is nothing but Veda only. Mahabharata, Itihasa and Puranas, they talk about Dharma, Artha, Kama. Not only that, even Moksha also. Generally we think Moksha means that Moksha Shastra comes only in Vedanta. Dharma Shastra comes in Puranas. But it is not like that. If we understand fully, not only Dharma Shastra, even Moksha Shastra also is there. That's what we are going to see. This Sanatsu Jatiyam, this text, is going to deal with the topic of Moksha Shastra, which occurs in Mahabharata. We know it is a Dharma Shastra. Even Artha Kama also included in that. Moksha Shastra, if we see the Shanti Parva of Mahabharata, in that Moksha Parva, even thousand four five hundred slokas are there in Moksha Parva. Thousand five hundred slokas, thirty five chapters, fully talk about Moksha. But generally people won't deal with that topic. That is called Shanti Parva. In that moksha, dharma, it comes. Similarly, another moksha topic is Sanatsu Jatiyam. So this Mahabharata, written by Vyasa Bhagavan, the essence of Vedas, Dharma Shastra and Moksha Shastra are combined. Veda Purva, Dharma Shastra. Veda Anta, Moksha Shastra. Both are combined in Mahabharata by presenting so many characters. Different characters are there in Mahabharata. One lakh verses, totally. Total Mahabharata. Valmiki Ramayanam, 24,000 only. 24,000 Valmiki Ramayana. Whereas Mahabharata, 1 lakh verses. In that 1 lakh verses, Bhagavad Gita comes in the middle. 755 slokas, only Bhagavad Gita. That Bhagavad Gita comes in the middle. Similarly, this Sanatsu Jatim also occurs in Udyoga Parva of Mahabharata. There are so many Parvas. Parvas means uh, chapters are called as Parvas in Mahabharata. Udyoga Parva, this uh, topic occurs, Sanatsu Jatim. There is a beautiful shloka, how great Mahabharata, if you want to know, one shloka is there. Generally, generally they quote that shloka to know the greatness of Mahabharata. I used to listen from my childhood in Telugu. Tinte garele tinali, vinte Mahabharatam vinali. Ani. That means if you eat nice um, no, ghee, what I? Sapta adi sapta so, Adamadri, the proverb. Not only that, Mahabharata is called as Panchama Vedam. There are only four Vedas 
Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, Atharvanaveda. But this Mahabharata occupies next to that Veda, it is called as fifth Veda, Panchama Vedam. Mahabharatam as Panchama Vedam they consider. That's why it is very, very important uh, Itihasa. Why it is called as Itihasa? Mahabharata is called as Itihasa. And a historical event occurs in that. Itihasa. Thus it happened. Iti means thus. Ha asa means it happened long ago. Thus it happened. Itihasa. What happened? What happened? Mahabharata happened. History. That is called Itihasa. What is that sloka, beautiful sloka? Dharme charthe cha kame cha mokshe cha bharatar shabha. Hey bharatar shabha, O Arjuna. This Mahabharata includes all purusharthas. Dharme cha, arthe cha, kame cha. Chakara stands for and. Dharma and kama and artha. Dharma, artha, kama. He Bharatar Shabha. Yadi hasti. Yadi hasti. Whatever is there in this. So moksha is the fourth purushartha. Four purusharthas there in this Mahabharata. You know what are our four purusharthas? Purushartha means what? Purushena archate iti purushartha. Human goals. What is our goal? Money. First earning money is our goal. Then kama. After earning money, what to do now? Eat. Enjoy. Kama. Fulfill your desires. So, artha kama. After eating some time, let me do some punya karma. Save some punya next birth. Dharma. Like you people volunteers know, I want to do volunteer job, I want to do some dharma, punya karyam. Dharma cha arthe cha kame cha mokshe cha bharatar shabha. Yadi hasti tad anyatra. Yatu iha asti. Whatever is there in this Mahabharata, Yatu iha asti, whatever is there in this Mahabharata, tad anyatra. It is there in this world, you can see. Whatever said in Mahabharata, you can see in the world. Yenne hasti na tatpachit. Whatever is not there in this Mahabharata, it is not there in world also. It is not there in the world. What is not said in Mahabharata, it cannot be there in the world also. Whatever talked about in Mahabharata, you can see in the world, whatever is not told in Mahabharata, it is not there in the world. And the second line is very important. Yenne hasti tadanyatra, yedi hasti tadanyatra, yenne hasti natat kvachit. That is the greatness of Mahabharata. So therefore, it includes everything. If you study thoroughly Mahabharata, you know what is dharma, how to earn money, artha, how to fulfill your desires legitimately, moderately, and how to attain moksha. All purusharthas you get in one Mahabharata. So therefore, people say, I love Mahabharata, Ramayanam, Bhagavatam, but I cannot understand Vedanta. Vedanta is very, very tough, they say. Now you understand, really speaking, all these Puranas, Itihasas, meant to prepare the person, they have to mature enough and attain moksha ultimately. 
otherwise they remain as stories that's why for many people they are still stories <coughs> they are remaining as stories a kada mahabharata kada avaru kada solraru ani solli poyidu some kada is telling what kada na bhagavata kada mahabharata kada ramayana kada even in ramayana also there is a moksha part rama geeta is nothing but moksha bhaga so therefore we understand in this way mahabharata means not story part dharma artha kama as well as moksha also this is the significance of mahabharata this mahabharata is the essence of vedas dharma shastra plus moksha shastra therefore in bhagavad gita end of the every chapter what comes iti shrimad bhagavad gita su upanishadsu yoga shastre and the yoga shastra is called dharma shastra brahma vidyaya means moksha shastra so dharma shastra and moksha shastra both are combined if i look at it as only story part i am focusing on only partial of that uh, dharma shastra i am not seeing the moksha shastra it is a partial vision suppose anybody think i don't like this mahabharata kakandbul stories ramayana also i don't like many portions bhagavata ella kada enak venda i want to go to highest philosophy na moksha shastram only i am because i am an advanced students i am not uh, interested in st- reading the stories and all suppose anybody says that is also a partial vision that is also a partial vision therefore bharata bhagavata ramayana study also important vedanta is also important moksha shastra also is important therefore the teachers should teach in such a way they are not separate like they are two eyes of a same person dharma shastra is one eye moksha shastra is one eye you want to two eyes or one eye <laughs> so we have to decide you want one eye or two eyes everybody wants two eyes to walk you want two eyes for what about life journey parama purushartha of human life you require dharma shastra and moksha shastra one eye is dharma shastra another eye is moksha shastra therefore lord krishna taught to arjuna dharma shastra as well as moksha shastra so this is the background of mahabharata now in this uh, mahabharata everything is said everything is said means what ethics politics administration valor and different characters with different emotional problems very very unique characters not ordinary dharma shastra means moral values that ethical values are also in there and um, politics full of politics only there administration how to rule how one should rule the country how one should rule the people and how the characters a person a spoken word will lead to what are all consequences a spoken word characters the which are committed to a spoken word one word if they utter that word they are committed to that word vak paripalanam that itself is a life for them they stick to their word because of sticking to their own words sometimes they misplace that misuse the dharma shastra 
because of that commitment commitment is good but at the same time that commitment uh, will cause so many you know adverse uh, situations very very trivial situations they have to undergo if you come to the story part of that uh, maha bharata whether it has happened or not happened it is a fictitious or real we are not interested every word is a gem in mahabharata how it is useful for me i am not interested in that date when it has started whether real it has happened or not are these characters really behave like that i am not interested in that of course we are not interested in that then what what is our interest in what for mahabharata has come to us what for that vyasa bhagwan presented mahabharata what is his intention not to probe into the a uh, reality or unreality of the story part not to probe into that fictitious part if anything the fictitious means uh, some uh, unbelievable unbelievable certain situations incidents mahabharata is not meant for that it's not written to see that reality unreality whether you believe or not it is not interested that's why mature people always take the essence of mahabharata get the benefit leave out the rest some people will ask how lord krishna taught this Mahag- bhagavad gita in the battlefield how is it possible we say we don't know he taught that's all we are not interested in that lot of sounds lot of disturbances are there how can he teach this bhagavad gita why you are bothering about that what is there in bhagavad gita we look into that how krishna paramatma taught don't bother about that if we are not uh, alert in this part regarding this point our mind will be deviated distracted to so many things and we lose the purpose of studying that's why many people lose the purpose they never get the benefit and they go on doing research 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 really it happened or not when it has happened what is the correct date that date this right or not they probe into this only better not to probe into all that let us see what is the value of mahabharata if anybody argues like this on those points we say namaskar no. we are not interested in that you go to archaeological department they will tell you i am not interested if you want to go to kurukshetra hastinapur delhi you want to do research do but our people never bother about that our people bother about dharma what a character you take one one character dhritarashtra is a typical character <coughs> karna is another typical character duryodhana another hmm, character then uh, who is he shakuni shakuni mama okay this is another character all childhood problem characters nothing they all have got the childhood problems pav we have to pity of them that's all born blind dhritarashtra by birth blind person lot of diffidence inferiority complex with that he grows because of that diffidence 
because of that inferiority complex the consequences are very 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 tragic if a person develop that diffidence or inferiority complex what are all problems comes we can see in dhritarashtra character another character duryodhana another childhood problem gandhari married to dhritarashtra she came from afghanistan ah. afghanistan is called gandhara desham the present afghanistan is called gandhara desham from that place only she came that gandhari got married to this dhritarashtra what she did my husband is blind he is not able to see anything pativrata therefore i also should not see anything you know this story she also folded her eyes deliberately from that time marriage onwards because whatever he is not seeing how can i see with my eyes therefore i also close my eyes with a cloth that to black black cloth okay so that uh, even transparent also should not <laughs> appear like that she decided if she close her eyes okay but she should not give birth to children no but she gave birth to not one or two and she gave birth to 100 children and both parent mother and father cannot see into the eyes of the children the child wants the mother look and father's look through that look itself the child grows in a healthy way what she could have said to dhritarashtra hey prabhu don't worry if you don't have eyes doesn't matter my eyes are your eyes eh? she could have taken this decision no my eyes are your eyes i am near to you next to you whatever i am seeing i will just like that pass on to you as though as good as you are seeing and i will take care of children you don't worry she has to say like that but this woman what she did intelligent or unintelligent no so we cannot say gandhari is not an ordinary woman she know whole dharma shastra very very well informed woman such gandhari when she closed her eyes children they are not able to bring up the children in a congenial way healthy way no. and because of that no lack of vision from the parents duryodhana dushyasana no all this one by one hundred children puja swami ji says everyone is a rogue <laughs> hmm dushyasana no what a character dushyasana character just because of that mother's decision they never knew the importance of the mother's father's guidance how children how much they require this dhritarashtra when he is blind according to dharma shastra he is not supposed to rule the kingdom hastinapura is the kingdom he is a raja kshatriya a blind person should not rule the kingdom therefore according to dharma shastra his younger brother pandu he can rule the kingdom even though dhritarashtra sits on that crown asanam but pandu only does all the kingly duties everything pandu his younger brother alone is taking care of this administration 
Dhritarashtra is helpless. What to do? By birth, I am a blind person, I cannot rule. That power mongering is there inside from childhood. Even though I am an elderly person in the family, I could not have that opportunity because of this weakness, you know, handicap. Okay, his brother is ruling the kingdom. And first, both of them became pregnant, Gandhari and Kunti Devi at the same time. And Dhritarashtra is waiting, at least my son, first if he born, next time my son will become the ruler. Dhritarashtra is expecting. And Kunti is also pregnant here, Gandhari also pregnant. And uh, five minutes, half an hour for one hour gap, Yudhishthira born first. Later, Duryodhana born. This Dhritarashtra is so angry. He is expecting, first news came, Kunti has got a son. After half an hour, Gandhari also got a son. Kunti son alone can become the ruler. Dhritarashtra son cannot become the ruler. This is the rule. He cannot ask. Only half an hour then a gap. Half an hour, even one minute. <laughs> Five minutes. Nothing doing. Then that uh, Kunti Putra, the Pand Putra, Yudhishthira became the king. This Kunti, another character, you see, when she was a girl and she served a Mahatma, by serving they are very happy, sages, you know. She did lot of service to him. I am so happy that sage said, My dear child, whatever you want, that will be fulfilled. Whatever you desire, it can be fulfilled. He said, just give a boon and he went off. This girl, eight year or nine year old, Kunti, do not know anything. Let me check up whether this boon will work out or not. Let me check up whether this boon will work out or not. If I get a small baby, a nice baby, she is imagining, looking at the Lord's son and imagining such a brilliant child. If, if I get a nice child, brilliant child like son God, that thought came, a baby is in her hand. She do not know what to do this, this baby. And really she is afraid of, yes, this boon is working, but what to do this <laughs> baby? Silently she went and dropped that baby in the waters, in a box. And one charioteer took that box and opened and he saw a baby is there inside sitting. That baby is in another than Karana. And Karna brought up by that charioteer, Suta. He became Suta Putra. Really speaking, he is a Kshatriya, but he became a Suta Putra there. And you see the Karna character from childhood onwards. Abundant child, inside Kshatriya, outside Suta. Swabhava is Kshatriya Swabhava. With full of power, lot of tejas, brilliance. But Suta Putra, Suta Putra, everybody is, you know, paining, you know, lot of pain, you know, when they are telling like that. I am not a Suta Putra, how can I be Suta Putra? Because his intelligence like that. But he is also very, very angry with the society. Whole world, you know, 
his uh, always want to take some vengeance on the society somehow or other and he stood when this swayamvara time also draupadi swayamvara time this karna also went there and that um, what mascha yantra bhedanam mascha yantra the fish is rotating and you have to see that uh, not you someone who is going to marry draupadi they have to see that fish in the waters and uh, it is revolving in high speed seeing in the water the person has to hit that uh, fish not fish fish eye eyeball that can be done only by arjuna next to arjuna karna can do that when arjuna did karna said i also can do i also can do then draupadi said no you are a suta putra i cannot marry i have to marry only kshatriya i have to marry only kshatriya no intercaste married those, those days <laughs> and you see the karna's position he has got valor but he couldn't express that valor because of he is a suta putra you are a suta putra i cannot marry you when she said karna was so angry and after marrying with this draupadi arjuna what he did he came to his mother oh mother i bought a i brought a gift to you today and he want to suspense you know keep suspense you know, something his mother then every time whenever they bring some gift you know her uh, usual word is allah five of you share she says five of you share draupadi is hiding behind and he said i brought a gift for you na all of five of you share then <laughs> he showed what is the gift na this girl is standing draupadi in front then kunti understood what mistake happened and all five pandavas heard that what to do my mother said to share this gift what to do now? but none of them are ready to <laughs> go near to draupadi how is it it is not dharma then narada comes so great people comes and says what my mother says it has to be followed kunti says no 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 i do not know that is the other ordinary gift i thought just uh, don't care about my word five children pandava says no mother whatever come from your mouth it has to be implemented those days pandavas <laughs> whatever word comes from your mouth to be implemented amma we cannot uh, you know neglect or ignore your word statement spoken word one spoken word how powerful it is now they agreed for that then you know that story later you know we are not interested in further what happened i am not teaching bartha story here just i am telling how the characters based on a spoken word and emotional problems childhood problems not only that raga dveshan another brother dhritarashtra has got another brother called vidura vidura is a, a gnani once after ruling some time pandu went to vanaprastha when he went to vanaprastha yudhishthira is ruling the kingdom when he is ruling the kingdom duryodhana is so unhappy somehow or other he want to grab the whole power from this yudhishthira's hands whole kingdom and he takes the help of that shakuni mama who is matchless na matchless person in cheating 
Nobody is uh, matching to Shekuni Mama that much he can cheat. So Duryodhana takes his help and he cheats Pandavas and he sends them to forest, 12 years forest life and one year incognito, without knowing where they are, they have to live. One year. Totally how many years? 13 years they have to live. Afterwards you come, I will give the kingdom. This is the rule, condition. Because of that Maya Dyotam, die game, they all sent to forest and Duryodhana is ruling the kingdom and Vidura is giving lot of uh, no? Neeti, Dharma, everything is teaching to Dhritarashtra and Dhritarashtra says many times to Vidura, I know what you are teaching, I know all values. Dhritarashtra knows whole Dharma Shastra. If I look at my son Duryodhana, I forget everything. All the values I will forget. Whatever you are talking, I love them. I know them also. How to practice also, I know them. But unfortunately, if I look at my son's face, I forget the whole thing, Dharma Shastra. This is what Dhritarashtra says. Then finally, Dhritarashtra after 13 years, Pandavas has to come back. They sent a word, ask Duryodhana to give kingdom back to us, at least half of the kingdom to us. First uh, treaty failed. No half of the kingdom, I don't want to give any piece of land to Pandavas. Again, second messenger came, if you are not interested in giving half of the kingdom, at least give five agraharams, five villages. Nothing doing, Duryodhana says, no. Second messenger comes, third messenger comes. If you are not able to give even five villages, give five houses for them. Then Duryodhana says, no, I don't want to give even five houses. Then Dhritarashtra sends message with Sanjaya. Hey Sanjaya, you go and tell to Pandavas, Yudhishthira, <coughs> not to ask for kingdom. You tell to Pandavas, not to ask for kingdom. Let them live. Anyhow, 13 years they lived. They are well trained in eating arms. You know? And the forest line and the is they are very much accustomed. Let them live there itself. He sent a word through Sanjaya. Sanjaya went there to meet Pandavas. Pandavas says, Yudhishthira says, No. Whatever legitimately has to come to us, we will get it. By Sama, Dana, Veda, finally if it won't work, Dandana. We are ready to fight, fight for one's own right. No? You have to fight for room, no? You are right to fight for room. <laughs> yeah, you can demand, you have right to demand. No? So, you, you are not fighting, I am telling, you can demand. Whatever, because if you don't demand what you deserve, that is also misplacing your own rights, no? You are not utilizing your rights properly in earth. Therefore, you have to use, therefore, Yudhishthira sent a message, we are going to fight, if they are not going to give the kingdom to us, part of the kingdom, we are going to fight. And Sanjaya carried that message and came to Dhritarashtra and says to Dhritarashtra, Dhritarashtra is very eager, ah, what Yudhishthira said, what Yudhishthira said. What Yudhishthira said? He said, if you give kingdom, okay, if you don't give, they are ready to fight. 
Dhritarashtra is so unhappy. They will fight with my children? Yes. Then what said further? What further they said? Yudhishthira said. Sanjaya said, I am so tired. Okay. I am not going to reveal anything. Further, further what Yudhishthira said. Tomorrow in assembly, I will tell everything what Yudhishthira said. They are ready to fight. What is going to happen? What is other discussions taking place? Tomorrow I will present in the assembly. Now I want to take rest. After a long travel. So I want to take rest. And Sanjaya retired. And he went to his bag. In the night time, he is sitting alone here. He is not able to sleep. He tried sleeping tablets also. Nothing working. <laughs> And he imagines the whole now battle, Yuddham. Suppose Pandavas come. Pandavas are not ordinary people. Everyone is born out of uh, that Indra, Yamadharma Raja, all no, Varuna, Vayu, Putra, Bhima. If you remember now, Dhritarashtra cannot sleep. If they come and fight with my children, what will happen? Bloodshed. Dead body is just his imagining. The whole thing. All my hundred children are going to die. There is no doubt. In front of Duryodhana, in, in front of Arjuna, in front of Bhima, where are my children? Hundred. Number hundred. No quant quality. Quantity is there. But even Pandavas five, qualitatively they are very powerful and strong. Then what to do? And he is very much disturbed. And one side, out of moha, he has got lot of attachment towards Duryodhana, Dusyasana, uh, towards his uh, sons. And one side, he is not interested, even Dhritarashtra is not interested in giving kingdom to Pandavas. How to avoid this battle? If they die in the battlefield, I become alone here, already old. I am already old, already blind. If everyone die in the battlefield, what am I going to do here? And they are going to come and rule the kingdom, Pandavas. And Dhritarashtra is really is, uh, sitting and thinking about the whole what is going to happen. Then he sent a word to Vidura. Vidura only nice, uh, always uh, talking very nicely, soothing. And uh, always he advised, you know, with Dharma Shastra it asks. Let me call Vidura this time, so that he can give some few nice words, you know, consoling me. You know. He sent a word to Vidura. Vidura came and Vidura is uh, giving just advising to Dhritarashtra. See, Pandavas are dharmic people. You have to control your son, Duryodhana, Dushyasana. Whatever legitimately they deserve, that kingdom you have to give to them. He is teaching this Dharma Shastra. And Dhritarashtra says, speak something else. <laughs> Tell me something else other than this. Then Vidura is so compassionate. He knows whole Dharma Shastra. He knows whole Moksha Shastra. But Vidura is not a Kshatriya, is not born to a Kshatriya woman. Therefore, he belonged to a Shudra family. Even though he is a brother, I am not interested in giving that story part. Okay, Vidura is teaching so much to him. Dhritarashtra is very much interested in knowing. Now I have Shoka, lot of sorrow. I heard that. Tarati Shokam Atma Vidu. I heard that word. Atma Vidu, the knower of Atma, Tarati Shokam. He crosses over sorrow. I heard that. Tell me what is that Atma? I am thinking about this death, Mrityu. This Mrityu itself is giving me you no know, lot of pain in my mind that death what is going to happen tarati mrityu 
atma vitana i want to know about this what is death is there deathlessness how to come out of this sorrow what is that atma please give some knowledge about that so that i can come out of this sorrow dhritarashtra asked nida smashana vairagyam anna he got lot of detachment vairagya and he asked vidura please tell me all these things anna then vidura said so compassionate vidura somehow or other he want to bring change in dhritarashtra's mind this is the right time you know this is the right time he has got at least temporary detachment i want to know about that atma i want to know about the deathlessness immortality what is that immortality na deathlessness if i know about the deathlessness i can avoid this death which is going to be caused by this battle i can avoid please tell me about that deathlessness then vidra says yes i am very happy you are asking but i am not qualified to talk about that atma about that moksha even though i know what it is what is atma what is deathlessness i know everything not only dharma shastra vidura knows everything he is a gnani i said i know but i am not the right person to teach i am not a brahmana that means a brahmana alone can impart this knowledge but knowing is possible for everyone brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra all can get a brahma gnanam but to teach to others brahmanas are only permitted according to shastra that is the rule they used to follow those days i am not talking about kali yuga okay those days so with, because he knows dharma shastra fully he want to implement that vidra says i am not the right person to talk about that i will tell you when he dhritarashtra said tarati shokam atma vitana chanavadani vidra remember sanat sujata this statement done by sanat sujata in 7th chapter of chandogya upanishad tarati shokam atma vit the knower of atma crosses over the sorrow sanat sujata our sanat kumara is the right person to give this knowledge since you are very much interested in knowing this i ask the sanat sujata to impart this knowledge that mahatma is the right person to talk about this subject this subject other subject dharma shastra and all i am ready to talk but this subject even though i know but a really qualified person to teach to you is sanat sujata since vidura is a gnani a tapasvi just he invokes sanat sujata just he invokes things in his mind let sanat sujata come here in front of me just sanat sujata come and vidra tells about the condition of dhritarashtra this is the condition of dhritarashtra he is asking for that atma vidya brahma vidya by knowing which one can cross over this sorrow and one can become immortal deathless free from mortality you please impart that knowledge to dhritarashtra vidra asked and vidra left that place sanat sujata is sitting and he said to dhritarashtra now guru is ready in front of you he is going to impart that knowledge you can ask whatever doubts you have 
he is the right person to teach you vidura says this sanat sujata why he has got that name sanatana brahmanah jataha he is the manasa putra of brahma ji the one who came by invoking vidra invoked sanat sujata in front of him sanat sujata is standing there a sage born sage born sage in a born gnani born from brahma ji's mano sankalpa brahmanah manasah jatah from brahmana and brahma ji is four headed brahma from chaturmukha brahma mind this sanat sujata born not only one there are four somebody says there are seven so again don't enter into that topic there are seven that is in the night okay in the quiz program you can have plenty of this arguments okay there are seven somebody says now we take four sanaka sanandana sanat sujata sanat kumar sanat ani per sanat sujata sanat ani per avarku sanat all are kumaras all are kumaras na boys chiranjeevis they never become old always young eternal boy ani per sanat sujata na sanat na eternal brahma ji hiranyagarbha is eternal from that eternal hiranyagarbha brahma ji he they are born that's why sanat su shushtuhu jataha na with gnanam vairagyam sufficiently shushtuhana well born no childhood problems and ardham shushtuhu jataha means no childhood problems the born by birth itself gnanis no marriage and all they are gnanis they are sanyasis sanaka sanandana sanat kumara sanat sujata in the sanat sujata since they are all kumaras kumaras means unmarried boys eternal boys this sanat sujata one among the four so sanat sujata is standing in front of us now okay so sanat sujata is going to impart this knowledge what is deathlessness is there death at all is it real or unreal what do you mean by deathlessness if death is not there what do you mean by deathlessness asatoma sadgamaya tamasoma jyotirgamaya mrityorma amrutangamaya mrityu means mortality death amrutangamaya means immortality there is a prayer oh lord lead us from mortality to immortality that means there is a mortality somebody says there is no mortality at all mrityu is not there at all somebody says there is mrityu somebody says what is true dhritarashtra want to know <laughs> he is very much interested in that topic then he is approaching sanat sujata and going to ask the question with that the text begins how the text begin na vaishampayana is teaching this brahma vidya to janame jaya brahma vidya means mahabharata all this who are all going to teach whom and i will tell you in the next session okay so that vaishampayana it begins then dhritarashtra then sanat sujata three characters are going to come here in this text that we'll see more om purnamad purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevamashishyate om shanti 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 hi हरि ओम 
श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः